Because of the work that I do and because of the threads that I write, I feel like I'm in a very unique position to talk about the themes in the Layer 2 ecosystem and the trends that I'm seeing. So I'm hoping to give you a bit of a bird's eye view of the Layer 2 ecosystem today and what I'm seeing in the themes. Um, so to start um, with off-chain data, off-chain data in rollups is here to stay, I think it's fair to say. Um, on the rollup level, we're seeing a push to give users a choice of off-chain data um, in ZK rollups that looks like Validiums and Volitions, and for optimistic rollups that looks like Arbitrum Nova and MetasDAO's optimistic data availability. Uh, really, the question you should be asking yourself when you're considering off-chain data for your DAP is what does this mean for security? What does it mean for my users' funds? Uh, and I think that there's a lot to consider there. If we accept that off-chain data is here to stay, then we should be thinking about ways to make those dApps more secure despite the off-chain data. Some dApps don't need all of their data on-chain, on and those that might need more security, there are some solutions. One thing that I thought was really interesting was an article that actually came out today by Polinia, who's someone on Twitter that I follow, uh, you may have heard of them, uh, suggesting that we have split security data sharding on rollups. Uh, this is literally an idea that came out today, so as far as new trends, uh, I expect to see some implementations of this sometime in the near future but definitely not right now. Uh, but that should help with some of the security concerns around off-chain data and rollups. Uh, we're also going to continue to see progress and innovation on the bridging fund front. Uh, we just saw Georgios talk about some really interesting ideas about how we can have composability. Uh, but some of the things that I want to talk about are how popular layer two bridges right now are centralized and they keep the fees rather than sharing them with their users. That's not really a paradigm that we like in the Ethereum world. We don't really like centralized operators. We don't really like middlemen. So I'm expecting to see that paradigm being challenged. One thing that we already are seeing, Hot Protocol has announced that they're going to be more community centric. So that's just one early example of sort of that shift that I think we're going to see. We're also seeing really interesting work around ZK proofs to improve bridge architecture. Uh, we can use ZK proofs to verify. Um, so Suez Bridge uh, created a proposal called the Slush Proposal doing just that. Uh, we can also use ZK proofs to create light clients with ZK snarks, which is a relatively new idea, uh, succinct bridge Bridge wants to do that, so that's what you should look up if you're interested in that. Uh, so I would definitely keep an eye on ZK proofs within bridge architectures as a way to improve those architectures. Um, and also, in case you missed it, L2B announced last night the release of their bridge dashboard, which is really exciting because I think the more information that we give to users about the security of the bridges that they want to use, the more we can push bridge protocols to work to increase security. And also, we're giving users that data so they can make the informed decision about which bridge is right for them. Uh, when it comes to optimistic rollups, we're going to see these protocols branch out and really dive into innovative optimizations. I've called them optimistic optimizations, which I think is kind of fun. Um, Arbitrum Nitro and Optimism Bedrock are both huge steps forward for the ecosystem. Uh, yesterday at the Rollup Day event, Vitalik actually proposed several possible ways that we could decentralize provers uh, and also diversify provers. And luckily for us, both, Ar both Arbitrum Nitro and Optimism Bedrock are are already architected in a way that should allow for multiple provers and different types of provers. Uh, one of the cool things about both Arbitrum Nitro and Optimism Bedrock is that they're sort of paving the way for allowing uh, validity proofs within optimistic rollups, which is really cool and something I would definitely keep an eye on. Uh, rollups with layer three capabilities will honestly be able to eat up a lot of the market if they get off the ground uh, with offerings like privacy dApps, permission dApps for institutions, games, and even creating space for alternative L1 chains to execute on top of the layer two and ultimately still settle on Ethereum, gaining Ethereum security. Uh, success here will depend largely on ecosystem support, documentation, and ease of use. This is also kind of a new theme. Uh, recursive proofs uh, exist on StarkNet now, uh, but they're still pretty new, and I haven't seen any actual implementations of Layer 3s yet. If you have, let me know. I'd love to take a look. Uh, but I do think Layer 3s will be part of the discourse in the coming months and years as all of the ZK rollups especially mature and go to mainnet. Speaking of ZK rollups, uh, ZK EVMs are likely to dominate the attention of the layer two space in the coming months. 
Uh, ZK EVMs are really exciting and something a lot of us have been talking about for the past, I don't even know how long, honestly, since layer two kind of became a thing. Uh, and the reason they're exciting is because they are theoretically compatible with existing Ethereum tooling, making them much easier to use. Uh, they allow for a shorter waiting time to exit, um, to get finality, and also because they use ZK proofs and we all love math. Uh, well, I do anyway. Um, and I think as these protocols enter mainnet, the debate will turn to what counts as a true EVM. What is close enough? What is EVM compatibility and how much of it do we need for a ZK EVM to really operate the way that we expect it to? We'll also be talking a lot more about the innovative architectures and use cases that ZK EVMs allow. Ah, so I'd say things are getting a little spicy in the cryptoverse around various ZK rollups that are entering the ecosystem. Uh, I posit that competition is good, and I hope we can turn the spice into something constructive and eventually coalesce around some helpful standards. I think we're sort of in that diverge-converge area when it comes to ZK rollups, and we're still on the diverge side, but hopefully we'll get to converge soon. Um, and you know we're going to see a debate about how important ZK EVMs are, and that's also going to necessarily mean a discussion of how StarkNet's non-EVM ecosystem compares. Uh, we'll see more comparison materials and discussions of how security, decentralization, et cetera, uh, compares between the two types of ZK rollup protocols. Um, there's no question in my mind that the ZK space is red hot right now, and I expect ZK rollups to really take the stage going into 2023. If you had to pick one theme of anything that I've mentioned, it's ZK rollups and probably ZK EVMs in the near future. Uh, so it turns out seven minutes is not very long. I'm literally being told right now my time is up. Uh, so I did create a list of some more trends to keep an eye on um, that I didn't really have time to dive into. I'm particularly interested in the modular blockchain designs of protocols like Celestia and how they will relate to how those learnings can be taken into the layer two ecosystem and maybe make changes there. Uh, so you might be thinking, how on earth can I stay on top of all of these ecosystem developments and the space moves really quickly? And that's a valid concern. Uh, so I provided you with a list of some of the uh, some of the Twitter accounts that I follow that have some great educational content. I really recommend following these people. It's the best place to start, and then from there you can kind of see who they follow and what they're posting and become as educated as you want to be about the layer two space and how the ecosystem is growing. So in conclusion, layer two is here. It is changing fast and it's bringing some of the most exciting innovations imaginable to the Ethereum ecosystem. And again, my name is Faina. Thank you all for your time. Sorry for going over time. Um, and I hope that this talk was educational. Woo. Thank you, Faina. Thank you so much.